Okay, we're going to go through multiple examples. I'm going to show you some of the different techniques that you're going to use to solve these equations. And some of the questions are going to be a little bit easier, some are going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, let's jump into number one here. We've got one third to the x power equals 243. What you want to try to do first of all is see if you can get the bases on both sides of the equations to be the same. So what I recognize here is that 243 is really like 3 to the fifth power. And I recognize that one third is three to the negative one power, okay, because that's the reciprocal. And remember, when you have a power to a power, what do you do to the exponents? You multiply them. And so now you can see we have the same base. This is what's called the one-to-one -one property of exponents. You can just set the powers, or the exponents here, equal to one another. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say negative uh, x equals 5, multiply both sides by negative 1, so you can see x equals negative 5, and that's your final result. Okay, let's go to number 2. So this is a, a log equation. We have natural log of x minus natural log of 7 equals 0. What I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to add natural log of 7 to get it to the other side of the equation. So we have natural log of x, add this over, so we get natural log of 7. And now what this is called is the one-to-one -one property of log. So as long as the bases are the same, which natural log, these are both base e, then what we can do is we can set these arguments equal to one another, and we have x equals 7. Now, one thing you want to pay attention to is that when you get your answer, when you're solving these log equations, you want to just put it back in and make sure that you're not taking the log or the natural log of a negative quantity or zero. So this whole thing here should be positive, otherwise it's extraneous. So for number three, how would you do this one? Log base five of x equals negative two. Well, an important skill that you want to master is knowing how to switch from the log form to the exponential form and vice versa. So the way I like to do this is I like to think of as logs and exponential functions as inverses of one another. So if I'm taking the log base five, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to exponentiate, meaning I'm gonna raise both sides using base five, okay? And so now you can see these are inverses, so they cancel one another out, kind of like squaring and square rooting or adding and subtracting, they're opposites, okay, so they cancel each other. Five squared is 25, but because it's a negative two, we're gonna take the reciprocal, so that's 1 over 25, and that's our final result. Now remember what I uh, mentioned about logs, you want to take that and put it back in. Yeah, we're not taking the log of you know, a negative or zero quantity, so that means this is uh, perfectly good. So for number four, we've got e to the x equals seven. So here what we want to do is because that variable is in the exponent position, is we want to bring it down from there by doing the inverse okay, of exponentiating. We want to take the log or the natural log of both sides of this equation. So I'm just going to write natural log, natural log, I'm doing it to both sides to keep it balanced. Remember, natural log is really like log base e. These are inverses of one another, so they cancel each other out, and you have x equals natural log of seven, that's your final result. Okay, for number five, this one, okay, what we wanna do is we wanna work from the outside in towards this variable x, we're trying to get the variable by itself. So instead of multiplying by four, let's divide both sides by four, Okay, and now we have three to the x equals 16. We can't get the bases the same here, okay, because three to what power is 16? But what we wanna do is we wanna say, well, what's the opposite of uh, exponentiating? Let's take the logarithm. We just wanna make sure that these bases are the same. So I'm gonna take log base three of this side and log base three of the other side to keep it balanced, right? So these are inverses, and so we have x equals log base three of 16. This is an exact answer. Now, if your calculator doesn't allow you to change the base, okay, what you can do is you can use the change of base formula, which looks like this, log base 10. You can pick any base, like natural log, log base five, but here on most calculators you have log base 10 or the common log. 16 goes in the numerator, three goes in the denominator. So it's easy to remember because the three is a little bit lower, right? 16 is a little bit higher. Uh, that's an easy way to remember it, that's your change of base. These are equivalent, you can get a decimal approximation on your calculator. For number six, we wanna solve for x here. So again, like this one, we wanna work from the outside in towards that variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 12 to both sides. So that's gonna give us seven to the x equals 40. Well, we can't get the bases the same, okay, like we did in that first problem, but what we can do is we can say, well, that variable's in the x, position, so let's go ahead and do the inverse. Let's take the log base seven of both sides, right? So those are inverses or opposites, and you can see we just end up with x equals log base seven of 40. 
If you wanna use the change of base formula, we can do that. Here I'll use the natural logs for this one, natural log of 40 over natural log of seven. You can put this in your calculator and get a decimal approximation. Okay, we're getting a little bit more challenging here now. Uh, number seven, we've got e to the two x minus e to the x minus 12 equals zero. So the technique you wanna use on this particular problem is to factor into two binomials. So here we can see e to the x times e to the x equals e to the two x, because remember when you multiply, you add the exponent, so x plus x equals two x. And here we say what multiplies to negative 12, but adds to negative one, that's gonna be negative four and positive three. And you can see that negative four e to the x and positive three to the e to the x equals the middle uh, term, which is negative one e to the x. Now that we have it factored, we can set each of these factors equal to zero. So we have e to the x minus four equals zero and e to the x plus three equals zero. If we add four to both sides, we have e to the x equals four. And if we subtract three from both sides, we have e to the x equals negative three. Now what I'm gonna do, because that variable is in the exponent position, I'm gonna do the inverse. I'm gonna take the log, or the natural log in this case, of both sides. Remember, natural log is log base e. So these are inverses, so we get x equals natural log of four. Here, if we take the natural log of both sides, uh, these are inverses, so we get x equals natural log of negative three. But remember what we talked about earlier, you can't take the log or natural log of a negative quantity, so this is extraneous. We're just gonna cross that out. It's just gonna be natural log of four. Okay, for number eight, what do you think for this one? Uh, a little bit more challenging. What I would probably do on this one is think of this as <clears throat> four divided by one. And when you have a fraction equal to a fraction or a ratio equal to a ratio, this forms a pr uh, proportion, and you can cross multiply on the diagonal. So uh, four times one plus e to the three x, I'm gonna distribute the four, so that's gonna be four plus four e to the three x equals 100 times one, which is 100. Uh, let's subtract four from both sides, so that's four e to the three x equals 96. Let's divide both sides by four, so e to the three x equals, let's see, what would that be, 24? Okay, good, and then we just have to do the inverse now. Instead of exponentiating, we're gonna take the log of both sides, or in this case the natural log, because this is base e, those are inverses, and we have three x equals natural log of 24. Divide both sides by three, or you could multiply both sides by one third uh, to get x by itself, so that's one third natural log of 24, and you got it. Now if you wanna get a little bit fancy, you could bring up this one third as a power, that's the power property of logs, and remember the one third is like the cube root. So another option here would be to write this as natural log of cube root of 24. Okay, for number nine, we have a little simpler one, natural log of x equals uh, negative five. Remember this is uh, understood to be base e, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do the inverse of uh, natural log, which is to exponentiate both sides using base e. So these are inverses, we get x by itself, so we have x equals e to the negative fifth, or because this is a negative exponent, we can take the reciprocal and write this as one over e to the positive five, and that's your final result there. For number 10, a little bit more challenging, we've got uh, log base two of x plus log base two of x minus two equals three. What I'm gonna do on this problem is use our condensing properties to condense this into one log. So what we have is log base two of x times x minus two, which comes out to x squared minus two x equals three. So remember when you add, you multiply. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to do the inverse of log base two, which is to exponentiate both sides of the equation using base two. These are inverses, so that gives us x squared minus two x equals two cubed, which is two times two times two, which is eight. Let's get everything on one side of the equation by subtracting eight from both sides. So that's x squared minus two x minus eight equals zero, and now we're gonna factor and set the factors to zero. So what multiplies to negative eight but adds to negative two? That's negative four and positive two. And then all we have to do is set each group equal to zero. So we have x minus four equals zero and x plus two equals zero. Add four to both sides and subtract two from both sides. Now, remember when you solve these log equations, you wanna make sure that you're not getting any extraneous roots. So let's say, take this negative two. If we put negative two back in, we can't take the log of a negative quantity. That means that this is extraneous. Cross that one out. How about four? Well, this would be positive. This will be positive. So perfect, so it's just gonna be uh, x equals four. Okay, we've got a couple more examples here. Number 11, a little bit more challenging. 
Here what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm gonna use the condensing uh, properties for logs. And remember, when you subtract, what do you do to the arguments? Do you remember? You divide them, right? So remember, we're just combining these into one natural log equals natural log of x. So here what we have, we have log base e, log base e, we can set the arguments equal to each other. This is called the one-to-one -one property of logs. So we're just left now with x plus three over x minus one equals x. You can think of x as x over one because anything divided by one is itself. And what we'll do is we'll cross multiply on the diagonal uh, using that means extremes property and x squared minus x. So we're just multiplying here. You wanna make sure you distribute the x. Let's get everything on one side. So I'm gonna subtract x and subtract three from both sides. So that's gonna give us zero equals x squared minus two x minus three. All we have to do now is factor and set the factors equal to zero. So this factors to x minus three and x plus one. If we set these factors to zero, we get three or negative one. Now let's look at negative one. Negative one would make this negative. This would also make this negative. We can't take the log or natural log of a negative quantity, so this is extraneous. Let's double check the three. This would be six, that's positive, that's good. Three minus one is two, that's positive, that's good. And over there, it's also positive, so it looks like it's just gonna be three. Okay, final question, see if you can do this one. Uh, here we're trying to get, of course, x by itself, thinking about working from the outside in towards that variable. Uh, what's the opposite of multiplying by five? Of course, dividing by five, right? And so that's gonna come out to two, and we have log, and we don't see the base, so when the base isn't written, it's understood to be base 10, so I'll just pencil that in for us. And now, because that variable is like inside of that log, we wanna get it by itself or isolate it by doing the inverse. So instead of log base 10, let's exponentiate both sides using base 10. Those are inverses. We have x minus two equals 10 squared, which is 10 times 10, or 100. Add two to both sides, and you can see x comes out to 102. Quickly go ahead and put it back in. Make sure you're taking the log of a positive quantity, and that is, so that's our final result. If you want to uh, learn more about logarithms, follow me over to that video right there where I go into rewriting logs in exponential form, solving logarithmic equations, graphing logs. Follow me over there, we'll dig into some logs.